Catholic, speaking with Gary Phillips from Sintara this morning. Gary, good morning. Morning, Andrew. Well, Gary, last time you and I caught up, we were discussing your uh, phase two blood cancer trial being fully recruited. Uh, just firstly, give us some background to the study and expectation around seeing some results. Yeah, so just as a reminder, so this is a study where we're adding our lead asset, uh, SNT 5505, which is an antifibrotic on top of the current standard of care, which is a JAK inhibitor in patients with myelofibrosis, which is a, uh, a rare kind of bone marrow cancer. Um, the expectation is that we're going to help these patients both from a symptomatic point of view and also support um, their hematological symptoms as well, their bloods. Um, this is a study which has already gone, you know, been reviewed by the FDA. Uh, it's under an IND. Um, and we've had a number of discussions with the FDA as we've gone through clinical development. And this study, uh, which, as you say, was fully recruited uh, a couple of months back, um, is is the one where we we get to see what the drug does when it is used on top of the the, the mainstay of treatment at the moment, a JAK inhibitor. So it's a mm. it's a it's quite an exciting um, moment for the company because we we get to see what the drug really does. Uh, we've we've seen a bit before, but. Um, this period since the uh, full recruitment has been gathering the data, making sure we've got all that lined up. And of course, we're heading for interim data at the beginning of December uh, later this year, when we will be attending the American Society of Hematology meeting, which is probably the world's premier hematology meeting where this kind of uh, data gets a lot of attention. Just remind us, Gary, what's the opportunity within this disease area? Well, the, the, these patients um, that have myelofibrosis, they, they have a, an overall kind of life expectancy of, a, of around about five years. Um, they get a, a variety of symptoms and they, they, their spleens become enlarged, which gives them quite a lot of abdominal discomfort and pain. Uh, they get bone pain, night sweats, fevers. Um, but really, they, you know, their blood scores, their platelets and, and red cells and white cells kind of decline over the period. And unfortunately, the, the main drug in this area, the JAK inhibitors, um, whilst they relieve the symptoms, actually have a deleterious effect on the blood cells. Uh, so they sort of dampen them down. So, uh, and if I could if maybe throw a few numbers at you, but the, the you know the, a patient going on to a JAK inhibitor for the first time in the clinical trials that they've run, uh, only about 40% of them get a, what they would call a full symptomatic relief from the disease so there's a, a large number of patients that don't do that well on a jack inhibitor right from the beginning um, and over the five-year period most of them drop off because of side effects and tolerability and their blood count still deteriorating so there's a huge unmet need in these patients for a drug which will do something different and our drug is an antifibrotic so it restores we believe the health of the bone marrow uh, by tape removing the fibrosis allowing the bone marrow to start producing more red cells and white cells and platelets. Um, and um, you know, hopefully these patients eventually will be able to live longer. Um, but also by supporting their bone marrow, hopefully they can get more relief from taking their JAK inhibitor as well. So they're, symptomatically they'll, they'll improve. So their quality of life will improve, we're, we're hoping. So it's, a, it's quite an opportunity from a patient perspective and from a commercial perspective, the JAK inhibitors, this market is already worth more than a billion US dollars a year for drugs that are just symptomatic. So the, the world is out there looking for new drugs. And uh, we believe there's a real market for our drug as well as I said, the, the real need the patients have. And so what gives you confidence, Gary, in a positive outcome for the trial? Oh, well, I think the, we've, we've already done one study in myelofibrosis patients where we used it in uh, patients who had already failed on a JAK inhibitor. So these are patients who are probably um, 12 months on average uh, life expectancy left. So, so sort of end of life kind of scenario. Um, it was used in that patient population because, you know, with the FDA, the discussion was, well, first of all, show us what your drug can do on its own. Because we, if you, if you start with using it in combination, then it's sometimes difficult to tease about what, what your drug is doing and what the other drug is doing. So the first goal was to use it in patients who've already failed on a JAK inhibitor. And in that study, um, you know, almost half of the patients, we showed a reduction in the fibrosis in the bone marrow. So we know the drug is working. This was a six month study. And we, so we've demonstrated the drug is antifibrotic. 
we know that it does that and that's a that's a considerable uh, step forward uh, in improving the mechanism of the drug and the way that it's working but we also saw in that study several patients improve with their symptom score and their many of them had stable or improving blood counts as well. So in that very difficult patient population, uh, we've shown a very good safety profile. So no serious drug adverse events re reflecting on the drug itself. Um, and some, I think it would, I would call it encouraging signs of efficacy in a very, very difficult treatment group. So now that we're going into the patients that are much earlier in their disease they're using a jack inhibitor many of the patients we've recruited are kind of grumbling so they're they're not fully controlled so we think we've given ourselves an opportunity to demonstrate benefit and secondly based on the first study uh, which which was a six month study this one we've extended to 12 months so we are giving the drug a longer period of time to really show what it can do and i think in that period of time with that change in the bone marrow that we've seen we expect to see some changes in the clinical benefit to these patients i suppose once you announce the data what would be potentially the next steps and upcoming catalysts for centara yeah so uh, the first set of interim data will be at the american society of hematology in december um that will be not all the data we, we you know we finished recruitment uh, a couple of months back so we will have patients in that data release who've finished both six months and also nine months worth of treatment um nobody will have reached 12 months by that point but we will have patients that have got on to nine months so we're expecting um you know a uh, uh, an interesting set of data. It may not be the full um, Monty in terms of getting everything out, but you know, getting nine months worth of data will be the farthest we've ever taken a patient on on drugs. So that will be important for us. Mm. Depending on the quality of that data and how clear a signal it shows, uh, we will then go back to the FDA, um, and the discussion with the FDA will be to show them our safety data and reassure them that actually when we put our drug in combination with a JAK inhibitor, there are no adverse events or that adverse events are, are, are manageable. Um, and to show them the signal we're getting um, and we're looking at symptom score, we're looking at spleen size, we're looking at blood counts and we're looking at fibrosis in the bone marrow. So all of those things we'll be discussing with them and giving them a proposal for the next study, the pivotal study that would lead to registration of the product. So it's a really, really important discussion with the FDA and their response to that then opens up the doors for the company to uh, conduct that much larger study uh, that gets approval and the commercial uh, comes from that. Um, or indeed, um, will also be of interest to many potential pharma partners who are looking at us and waiting to see that. So we'll, we will meet probably with many of the companies that are monitoring our data at ASH later in this year to update them on where we're at and see what their interest is. Yeah. Well, Gary, look, since you and I last spoke, you've also announced this grant, which takes you into a phase two trial in a related blood cancer. Uh, just tell us a bit more about this. Yeah, so myelofibrosis is not the only game in town. Uh, you, you know, when I look at the other drugs that are being developed in hematological malignancies like myelofibrosis and myelodysplastic syndrome, they're very often cancer drugs that have been used in other places. And then I think they sort of said, well, well, why don't we try it there and try it there? So there's, I think I, I look and I see quite a lot of drugs which are kind of like slightly implausible mechanisms being trialed in these diseases. Our drug has a really clear um, uh, set of research findings, and we've, we've collaborated with universities and research institutes globally. And one of those collaborations was with a German uh, group in Heidelberg, and, um, and they produced some data in myelodysplastic syndrome. They took cells from patients with myelodysplastic syndrome and put them into animal models and then treated them with our drugs. So they're called xenotransplant models. So they're as close as you can get to testing it in, in humans without actually doing so. And they saw a dramatic improvement in these in these, uh, in the animal models in terms of the increase in red blood cells that these animals had in a very short period of time when our drug is used on top of 
uh, a, a hypermethylating agent, um, which is a standard of care in these patients. So they were really excited about that. They got it published in Nature Communications, which is a, also a very high impact journal, which accepts only the best research. So that was a real sign of endorsement. Um, but their interest didn't stop there. So they are connected, well, very well connected with the hematologists in a network across Germany. Um, and they put together a grant application that went to the German Cancer, uh, German Cancer Fund, which is a really prestigious group in Germany. So if you get a grant from the German Cancer Fund, then you you know you've really kind of hit the hit the top of the tree. So um, we were delighted when they turned around and, and gave a grant for this group to go ahead with a study in Germany looking at myelodysplastic syndrome. Uh, there are more patients in myelodysplastic syndrome than myelofibrosis. Um, there's probably even a greater unmet need. There's less competition. Um, so that study we expect to start at the beginning of next year. Um, and it's a really exciting step. And, and I think from a Sintara shareholders perspective, you know, it's a, it's great to see the drug being used in a related indication, one that's of value to potential partners as well, and being done so with non-dilutive cash that's coming from a fund. Um, so yeah, we were, we're, we were really pleased about that. And we've been, we're in sort of a, uh, bi-weekly discussions with the German group preparing for that study and supplying them with drug. You, you mentioned the start of next year. So what's the rough timeline around the MDS study? Yeah, so I think we, uh, we expect the first, first patient to be recruited in uh, the first quarter next year. Um, and the study has two parts. There's a dose finding part where they're using two different doses of our drug. We expect results of that from the by the end of next year. Um, and then the the drug then, and we expect to see some efficacy results in that as well. That's important to note. So both safety and, a, and an idea about whether the drug's doing something by the end of next year. So, you know, within the, in the next 12 to 18 months, the, the company is really going to see some quite pivotal trial results starting to read out and impacting on the, we, we expect on the attractiveness of the stock. Good to catch up, Gary. Thanks for your time. Thank you, Andrew.